नमस्कार व्यूवर्स हेलो एंड वेलकम टू सनसे टीवी आई एम टीना झा यूर वॉचिंग परस्पेक्टिव इनऑन्डेटेड रोड्स वाटर लॉक स्ट्रीट्स ट्रैक्टर्स फ्लोइंग थ्रू फ्लॉडेड लोकैलिटीज फेरिंग पीपल दैट्स द काइंड ऑफ मेहम कॉज बाय हैवी रेन्स इन बेंगलुरु As people struggled to get to offices, Karnataka Chief Minister Basavaraj Bumai has cited unprecedented rainfall and overflowing water bodies for the deluge. He said this was the highest rainfall in the last 42 years, leading to all 164 tanks in Bengaluru being filled to the brim. While also assuring of his government's commitment to restore normalcy in the city, the Chief Minister at the same time faulted the maladministration of the previous Congress governments for the present situation of the city. known as india's it hub the question is is the situation new to bengaluru isn't it pretty much the same situation every year when heavy rains and floods bring the city to its knees and not just bengaluru perhaps it's become a common problem in every metro city today in the country year after year we are witnessing a similar situation in different cities so what are we doing to address this huge problem of urban flooding what are the factors contributing and also aggravating this challenge and what is the solution this and much more in perspective today with an esteemed panel of guests who are joining us virtually today please to welcome on the program mr sudhir krishna former union secretary ministry of urban development professor anil gupta policy planning national institute of disaster management and professor dr ashish verma department of civil engineering indian institute of science bengaluru thank you gentlemen for joining us on the program today Professor Verma let me uh, you know begin the program today with you before we get into the larger ambit of the problem and what are the possible solutions let me first get in a sense from you on how bad is the problem in Bengaluru with the kind of mayhem the pictures that we are seeing uh, on tv screens and in newspapers is it really the worst of its kind flooding that Bengaluru is witnessing uh, uh, currently yeah thanks uh, tina for uh, this opportunity uh yes it definitely looks to be pretty bad uh, um at least you know in my memory of last few years or even the last decade uh, this level of flooding and the areas and the locations at which the flooding has happened are you know quite new in many cases or the level of flooding that has happened is quite you know surprising in many cases but it's not the case that the intensity of rainfall is the heaviest as you know honorable uh, chief minister uh, you know uh, mentioned um, in terms of reasons I, i was looking at the you know rainfall statistics and data it doesn't seems to be an extreme uh, you know event um, uh, even if you look at the uh, september first week data of last one decade this is not the heaviest rainfall we have seen uh, 5th september you know uh, it was around 19 mm uh, but we have seen in last decade uh rainfall happening more than this um, on several you know years uh, even the august rainfall the total month um, uh, in terms of mm is 184 mm which is not the highest that we have seen in the last decade so the problem uh, doesn't lie in terms of the rainfall and you know it's inundating the area it's about the unplanned and in many cases senseless you know infrastructure development Uh, that we are doing in the city uh, which is causing uh, this extreme level of flooding uh, so it's easy to blame the rain god but i don't think that's the predominant reason Absolutely. I mean, in my uh, opinion it is uh, it is predominantly a man made disaster perhaps year after uh, year mr krishna each year i mean we discuss each time it's a different city but the problem remains the same and we hear authorities blame it on the unprecedented rainfall the extreme weather events that we are increasingly witnessing now not just in india but worldwide the problem is can we just get away by saying that it the, the unprecedented rainfall has caused this mayhem and which is not just causing inconvenience perhaps it's also taking away lives precious lives of people and uh, w- w- what exactly are the factors which are aggravating this crisis year after year is something that we want to understand from you mr krishna yeah. <clears throat> good evening to everyone cities are engines of growth cities are the abode of you know enhanced happiness and economic activities and we have to nurture the cities it is most unfortunate that many cities in the country are facing such situations like flooding during heavy rains and so on on the other hand this very water can become a boon to the city if properly you know allowed to flow and stored in systematic way in lakes and ponds 
you know, within the city and beyond. Since we have not managed either the planning or the you know maintenance aspect of the rainwater flow, and that is what we are causing this havoc. Now, one immediate solution for this problem in Bangalore and elsewhere is to clear the drainages. The drainages have become damaged somewhere due to encroachment and at times due to you know um, solid waste being dumped, plastic being dumped here and there. It does not impact so much in the normal course, but the impact is seen when rainwater drain are heavy. So first, immediately all the drains have to be cleaned on war footing and wherever damaged or encroached, these should be cleared. That is an immediate requirement. And secondly, side by side, the flow of water into the lakes and out of the lake, because if the lakes do not find an outlet to a proper, in a further Raj Kalwe in Bangalore, there is a network of Raj Kalwe, that natural drainage network. Then again, the, uh, the same tank will become a source of flooding. So inflow into the tank, outflow from the tank, this has to be immediately corrected. This is the immediate requirement. At the same time, in a medium term, regional planning for uh, flooding, uh, drainage planning, regional drainage planning, because Bangalore metropolitan region, I was the metropolitan commissioner for BMRDA some years before, and we have the you know, perspective plan for the metropolitan region. So for the drainage is one side, and thirdly, the city has to expand horizontally. It is expanding very rapidly vertically. I think we have to develop satellite towns through the satellite town ring road, allow people to move out, economic activities should move out, and therefore, the whole pressure on the city, you know, to grow vertically and put uh, extreme load on the existing infrastructure, including the flow Absolutely. of water. Absolutely, I think will have to that's be, a know, significant maybe. point. So let me let me get in, Mr. Sure, sure. Mr. Krishna, I'll come back to you. Let me get in Professor Gupta's perspective on this. That's a very significant and valid point that you've made on, you know, the rate of urbanization that India currently is witnessing. We are in a state of transition, Professor Gupta, wherein urbanization perhaps is, uh, is at a very fast pace. Perhaps infrastructure upgradation is not able to uh, keep pace with this rapid pace of urbanization. At this rate, this problem is only going to, you know, increase further in terms of also posing challenge for the disaster management authorities. I totally agree with the, the uh, with you and uh, uh, Sudhirji that this is a uh, kind of a uh, man-made disaster. Uh, we cannot call it a uh, purely natural disaster. Uh, but what is uh, important that uh, this is uh, uh, a kind of disaster which can be prevented. Uh, for example, when we refer to that uh, drainage need to be cleaned, but it's very important that uh, uh, they, why, why these are clogged, why so much of uh, debris is there. So I, so I think uh, that, that poses a question on our waste management system or the efficiency of the waste management system. <coughs> uh, so that is, that is also uh, an important issue. And uh, uh, I, I would say that both the aspects are important here when we look at urban flooding. Yes, I totally agree that uh, the rainfall, the changes in the rain, rainfall pattern is also uh, partly responsible for uh, for uh, more frequent such kind of uh, incidences. Like uh, in a short span of time, uh, if, uh, when a lot of rainfall takes place, this is one. But second thing, uh, our drainage system has uh, uh, rarely been designed taking into account uh, the storm water uh, challenges. Primarily, those were for sewage. Now, now this transformation is taking place. But again, uh, this maintenance issue is uh, uh, very, very serious. And urban flood is uh, not not a big issue now. Uh, starting 2005, now urban flood uh, has been growing continuously. Uh, we often refer that most of metropolitan cities are affected by urban floods. But the reality is that not only metropolitan cities, even our smaller cities and uh, all the towns, if not fully, but parts, partly, all the even towns and cities are facing uh, in any kind of agroclimatic zone, <clears throat> even in Pakistan, the cities are facing the challenge of urban flood. So that poses a big <clears throat> question on the entire uh, uh, the, the, the design of the urban, uh, urban expansion. And uh, uh, most of the time, we try, we try to uh, uh, to speak of that uh, uh, the limiting uh, the the city growth. I think we should now realize that uh, that is that is uh, not possible. Cities are to grow because, as Sudhirji also referred, that cities are uh, the the economic engines, uh, the economic growth engines. So cities will certainly grow, but how do we really uh, plan our cities? 
and uh, how do we really execute those plans Absolutely. so that is that is very uh, very uh, uh, important uh, aspect Certainly. Uh, we and have for, quite for the enough urban lessons planners, even from how Bengaluru, big a challenge we have is it how big yeah. a challenge is it i mean you what you say is what has become an increasingly regular phenomenon worldwide uh, you know uh, uh, professor varma and the fact that we have to now uh, you know design or reinvent our systems in a way that we are able to cope up with the changing uh, climate patterns as well so if this is uh, to become the new normal and if extreme weather events are going to hit us our systems have to be redesigned how big a challenge is it now for urban planners not just in india but uh, globally yeah so it's an important you know point that you brought in uh, usually in india what we have seen in indian cities is our response to disasters like urban flooding is you know uh, more about um, post disaster response and recovery rather than building resiliency yes. um, in the urban system and in the transportation network and the system so least focus is given on improving the adapt uh, you know adaptability or adapt adaptation to this ever growing you know uh, situations of extreme rainfall events uh, but we just focus on how to you know do post uh, disaster you know response so in terms of that we did a you know interesting study a simulation study for bangalore where we did the vulnerability analysis uh, of the whole you know city and transportation network for a given extreme rainfall event which we took it from 2015 november uh, and how much of vulnerability the transportation network and different areas have and what kind of strategies that can build and improve the adaptation or the resiliency of the transportation system so when we did that simulation we actually found out that around 15% of the roads in the in bangalore would have uh, you know a flood depth of more than 5 um, half meter which makes it impossible for vehicles to pass through so in a in in such kind of rainfall situation there are 15% of the roads which will be unmotorable likewise the travel speed reduction would be anywhere between 25 to 35 percent reduction the average trip length for people traveling you know would increase by 15 to 20 percent and so on so then what we did was to understand how we can improve the adaptation or resiliency which is to see even if rainfall happens can people perform activities and their travel needs as same way as they do it on a normal working day when there is no rainfall happening even there are 4 percent cancellation of trips that we estimated when certain areas get extremely flooded and people can't move out or move in into those areas so if you improve for example the drainage systems on these vulnerable road links um, and say relocate uh, houses from low lying areas which are typically slums and low income you know households mm -hmm. um, or improve the redundancy of infrastructure in certain areas where say there is only one road uh, you know leading and if that gets flooded the area gets cut off so by doing all these measures we could you know prove that you can literally you know make all the trips happen even if a rainfall situation happens you can bring the travel times travel speed the trip length etc closer to what you would have on a normal working day so this kind of you know proactive approach uh, you know to build resiliency is what we need for indian cities without and which is never uh, planned or which is never accounted for when we do planning for infrastructure in our cities so if we do that i'm sure cities would be better prepared to uh, you know face this ever increasing you know extreme rainfall you know situation absolutely i mean you're right because this problem is only going to you know increase in the years to come given the uh, kind of uh, uh, climate change uh, events that we are witnessing mr krishna so ever since you know the incidents uh, like these of heavy downpour flooding inundation in bengaluru has happened there's been a flood of uh, memes on social media saying you know if this is the state of india's it hub wherein uh, we are seeing that youngsters are traveling close to 2 to 3 hours to develop apps which will you know uh, work on ways on how to deliver food on how to deliver uh, items within 10 minutes so even though it, if it's a meme the kind of messaging that it has is something that that all of us must ponder over so currently india has the second largest urban system in the years to come half of india's population is going to be living in cities and therefore this problem requires immediate attention unfortunately that's not happening i was going through a niti aayog report which was released last year on urban planning capacity and 
it says that 65% of the urban settlements in our country do not have a master plan. And perhaps urbanization, urban planning has not received the kind of attention that it requires. Now, the larger concern is that if we want India to have the status of a developed nation by 2047, these are concerns that have to be uh, prioritized. So how do we do that? Mr. Krishna. Well, you have very rightly uh, highlighted the need for uh, preparation of master plans. Side by side, the existing master plans need to be revisited. Many of the master plans, in fact, majority of the master plans are outdated and they, they need to be you know, uh, reviewed again, taking note of the climate change that is happening and also the uh, mi uh, migration pattern. You know, People are coming to some cities more than the other cities. Bangalore is an example. Bangalore attracts far more, uh, you know, migrants uh, of all levels. You know, people of high quality, high level of employment to modest level of employment come to Bangalore more than they go to many other cities. So, such cities need a revised master plan, taking note of on both the climate change issue and demographic uh, changes. But at the same time, I would say that Bangalore and cities like Bangalore, which are the hub of economic activity in the country. And they, are, they need to be given special attention. I think they, the government of India should take initiative in inviting such cities, calling such cities, identifying cities like Bangalore, Hyderabad, and a lot of other such cities. Uh, and prepare and to prepare their master plans once again, taking note of these factors, because these are the jewels in our country. Bangalore will, has to shine. Bangalore is shining already for its you know, wonderful achievements in terms of uh, IT and in terms of uh, economic activity, social activities. We have to nurture Bangalore. We cannot allow Bangalore to be inundated with problems like this. So it is high time that all should get together. Government should take lead. And though planning is a regional, local planning is a state subject, but I think government of India should take lead in the matter. And, uh, you know, call such major cities, Mumbai, Bangalore, Hyderabad, and uh, Pune, and so on and revisit their plan and make them, you know, do good. They can do wonderful work. Technology is available. Our minds are very good. We have got wonderful planners. We have got wonderful architects. But the only thing is people have to sit together. They have to sit together, exchange ideas, and definitely a solution will come. This water is a boon, actually. Water is a boon. here. We have to recall, in summer, we, we crave for water. We don't get water. But in rainy season, we, we are so nervous that it will have rain, heavy rains will come and we be in misery. So I think it's a very paradox which we have to resolve. It can be resolved and we can convert this challenge into a, a great uh, you know, strength for the cities like Bangalore. Absolutely. You're right. The pandemic, in fact, has taught us to convert challenges into opportunities. Now, how can we convert these challenges into opportunities is something that we have to think about. That's a million dollar question. Professor Gupta, you know, in this age of technology, wherein our lives have been made easier, how can we work towards not, uh, you know, uh, swinging into action once the disaster has taken place, but towards preventing the crisis? How can technology come to our rescue when we face such challenges? Uh, see, there are two uh, aspects come here when we uh, think of a preventive approach to uh, urban flood mitigation. One is that how do we really uh, reduce uh, this risk? And uh, if we take the typical example uh, of uh, Bengaluru, there are many other cities sim all, uh, having sim similar challenge. So land use is the key. Uh, this, is, this, is the, this is the fundamental thing. And uh, uh, the, uh, I would also uh, point out that there were significant studies, including on the Bengaluru, but uh, the authorities could not utilize those, uh, the, the benefit of uh, the, the outcome of those studies. I think that is a very important aspect that uh, when, we, when we are really aware, when we have uh, these studies available and the recommendations are there, uh, we coordinated a study where Bangalore was also a part, Indian Institute of Science and many others, uh, it was 2008, and then 2011, uh, a, a, a mapping of the, 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 the most probable uh, flood sites in cities were done. But looking to that, uh, how preventive cleaning of uh, the drainage, how preventive maintenance of the damage is, uh, drainage is taking place, this is one. And second thing, uh, land use uh, uh, the remedies cannot be take, uh, cannot be brought out in, uh, in, a, in a moment or a few months' time. It requires little... Uh, longer time, longer term planning, 
and uh, uh, i totally agree that land is a limiting factor so wherever the land is uh, like like the low lying areas are there we should look at the, the different designs of the buildings different designs of the infrastructure i think that is that is a very very important aspect uh, so uh, uh, as the previous speakers also referred that water management and water governance is basically the answer uh, to the entire uh, uh, the urban uh, urban flood uh, uh, challenge in the cities like uh, bengaluru and second thing uh, accepting that despite of the best efforts disasters can take place the urban flooding can take place so how do we gear up how do how are we prepared to to uh, manage uh, uh, this challenge so i think that is also very important because uh, whatever uh, what happens that uh, whenever any kind of uh, little little high rainfall uh, takes uh, heavy rainfall takes place the city comes to a, a standstill kind of situation everything uh, goes uh, haywire and we are uh, we are not prepared so we should also uh, be prepared for that residual risk we should real, uh, realize and recognize that despite of the best efforts these challenges can take place Absolutely. so uh, so how do we really uh, create uh, the 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 the, uh, the provisions of levies are provisions of redundancy even for the relief of water that how fast we can we can uh, uh, we can uh, 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 make the system uh, start functioning again. That is also very important. Certainly, that's a very uh, important because, point. Uh, I'll, 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 time is running yeah. out, Professor Gupta. I'll have to, uh, you know, uh, ask you to stop at that. I'll take one last question from Professor Verma on, you know, keeping the risks in mind and the challenges uh, uh, of limited land, but uh, you know, the uh, the uh, fast increasing population in our country. These are problems that we will continue to face. So, what is the way ahead? Is something that I would like you to, uh, you know, speak uh, for us and our viewers to explain to us what really are some of the solutions in which all of us can work together. Yeah, thanks. Um, so I think one uh, uh, important understanding we need to get through scientific study is the urban capacity. Urban capacity in terms of what population it can hold uh, based on, you know, what is the space available, what uh, how much water supply you can you know, give to the city, power supply that you can give to the city, how much road can carry capacity of traffic based on the densities that you're proposing. So a good, you know, uh, study, scientific study to understand the urban carrying capacity is extremely important to prevent such disasters from happening and manage also them effectively when, as in when, you know, the residual effect of that. I just want to point, point out you know, the one of the cause which is leading to these extreme flooding situations is the unscientific infrastructure development happening. And I'll just take two examples to, you know, talk about it. One is from Bangalore, where hundreds of kilometers of road are being white top, which that means they are being trans, uh, um, converted from uh, bitumen road, black top road to cement concrete road, which is white top road. Now, the way this has been done by BBMP, uh, the municipal corporation here, is they are laying the concrete slab on the top of the existing blacktop road. That means by doing so, they are raising the level of the road uh, on hundreds of these kilometers. Okay, and by raising the level, the level of the adjoining properties goes down. And so what happens is, you know, the runoff from the road then fa moves faster and at a higher intensity and at higher levels onto the adjoining uh, areas. This is the reason why areas which have never seen this level of flooding are seeing this flooding, yeah. this level of flooding today. Second example I'll take from, you know, dating back to 2005 in Mumbai. I was in Mumbai when in July 25th, uh, 2005, this extreme rain happened. I used to work in MMRD. I was stuck in, uh, you know, BKC for a whole night in my office and the water didn't recede. Now there, during that Mumbai, you know, flooding, the Western Express Highway and Eastern Express Highway were that time being, you know, expanded to from some five or six lanes. And while doing so, the drainage capacity on both the sides of roads were reduced to less than half. And that became a, you know, a important uh, factor why the whole, you know, Eastern Express Highway and Western Express Highway were flooded. So the bottom line is, that when you do infrastructure development, you have to do it scientifically uh, and, you know, uh, don't do it in a haphazard 
an unscientific manner. Absolutely. I think perhaps to, that's very you know, important uh, because it's people. not just leading to the kind of, you know, uh, inconvenience to people that we are witnessing in Bengaluru and cities like Mumbai. F uh, one is India's financial capital, the other is India's IT hub. And uh, most importantly, because of the kind of economic loss. So uh, yeah. I don't know uh, if, if the data is authentic, but uh, uh, there have been reports that IT companies are losing about 225 crores per day because of incidents like these. So all of this accumulates to you know and impacts the economic growth yes. of the country and this is why uh, pertinent solutions and immediate solutions are something that uh, all stakeholders must have to think about uh, so that having been said I'll have to wind up the program uh, thank you gentlemen once again for joining us on the program today sharing your thoughts your views with us and our viewers absolute pleasure to have you on the program today so that's it from thank us on this edition of perspective today viewers thank you for your time as well I'd see you same time tomorrow now with a different topic and a different set of panelists until then take good care of yourselves and keep watching sense of people